بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة The concept of mass migration has dominated the history of the world and can be crudely described as a natural phenomenon for acquiring livelihood and the search for knowledge. After the First and Second World Wars, migration from the British Commonwealth countries was encouraged with a view to contributing towards rebuilding the infrastructure of the United Kingdom and reviving the economy devastated by these wars. Amongst these migrants, a significant proportion was of Islamic faith and they settled in various parts of the country. During the 50s and 60s, many Asians and Afro-Caribbeans from the same batch settled in the London borough of Redbridge, coexisting harmoniously with other faiths. We were very young when we came here. We were looking for work and Europe needed a young workforce. So there we are. We worked very hard, we built up our institution, we built our businesses. After the Second World War, I came in 1950 in Britain. I used to go to uh, Regent Park to pray there and after, you know, only eight time we used to go there. That's the only mosque I seen him in England that time. Uh, Forty years ago, I moved to the uh, in Miss Barrow, Telephone, Redbridge, and uh, I opened the business. Uh, 35 years I used to run the business. Uh, time was hard. Uh, I used to pray in, there were no masks. I used to pray in the tent and the church. I was in Halifax in the early 60s and moved here in 1967-68 to London Borough of Fredbridge. 
and there was no place of worship at all for any other ethnic minority other than Christian and Jews. Uh, obviously, there was no provision for the Muslim community either. Ramadan 1968, 1 Kingswood Road, Goodmays. This is where it all started for around a thousand Muslim residents of the borough of Redbridge. Due to a lack of a proper place, Mr. Sher Ali Khan volunteered the two front rooms of his residence for evening Dharavi prayers and also after school Islamic classes. Subsequently, Mr. Adam Patel offered similar facilities for Ramadan prayers at number 17 Cambridge Road, Seven Kings. For the first time, there was now a common space where local Muslims could congregate. On the 7th of August 1970, the centre registered first ever memberships and donations were received which eventually multiplied dramatically in the years to follow. And that was the beginning of this organisation. Since then, we didn't stop. It was a long struggle, but uh, we didn't stop. Rapidly, they realised that they required their own dedicated place of worship and adequate facilities in order to host various social, interfaith and community activities. Inspired by this vision, Muslims of Redbridge ventured towards buying their first property at 119 St Albans Road in Seven Kings in 1974, with the mission of converting it into a dedicated place of worship. However, within three years the community had a slight setback, as the planning application for that particular project was not approved by the local authority. However, the Muslim community of Redbridge did not give up. Instead, they moved forward, setting their sights and intentions towards Albert Road. But eventually this place was in the market and we hired it in 1977 as a St Alban Church Hall. Subsequently we purchased it, we bought it on 6th of June 1978. So it's almost 34 years. 34 years probably? It is. It's a, it seemed like it yesterday. We subsequently bought it in 1978 and then gradually we expanded, we bought the adjacent property and in 1986, we put application for planning permission for first purpose-built mosque within the borough of Redbridge. It took us almost six years to get planning permission. The time was very hard. Alhamdulillah, after six years, we got the planning permission. And this huge building before use, we expanded beyond our expectation, beyond our dreams. The whole contribution comes from the members. There was no funding from outside at all. The local member provided all the contributions. And this was the ethic we adopted, that any need, the member will go on. Contribute. We demolished this place, uh, I, I remember very well, 29th of August 1994. Oh Allah, the Almighty, Allah, Allah, protect me and guide me. Allah, Allah, oh, to your love and mercy. Allah, Allah, ya Allah, don't deprive me Allah, Allah, from beholding your beauty. Allah, Allah, we moved to our next door bungalows, which we bought subsequently. The back of, backyard of the bungalow, we used tent, 42 by 21. So we were there almost two and a half years into tent while this construction was going on. Because we couldn't curtail, curtail our activities, there was no other place to go about. Uh, for a Muslim, five-day daily prayer is essential. For their Friday, which is a special day for the Muslim community, and uh, we used to overflow on those days. My relationship with the, with, uh, the centre is long-standing, for as long as I can remember, uh, since I was uh, probably about eight or nine years old. My earliest me memory of this was when it was uh, not in its current form, but actually as a church. I, I remember the time when we had Ramadan uh, and, and our night prayers, the Dharavi prayers, in the tent outside. Uh, that, that was around this time, uh, many years back. <laughs> On the 19th of October 1997, Ilford's first ever purpose-built mosque was successfully completed. Allah, 
Now that the place of worship is finally firmly established, Ilford Islamic Centre continues towards fulfilling the aspirations of the local community and engaging with other faiths. In view of addressing these problems in a more hands-on way, the centre decided that they should have more apt facilities to host activities and events that promote the community spirit and interfaith dialogue in, involving children, women and the community at large. Consequently, in June 1998, the centre acquired the Mildmay car park site, just opposite the mosque, for its daycare and community centre. Construction work on the daycare community centre began in 2001. In July 2003, the centre finally opened its doors to the 45,000 Muslims of the London Borough of Redbridge, but more importantly, opened its doors to welcome all other faiths from Redbridge. We work together and make this community what religion they are. It doesn't make any difference, right? As long as we all together, right? It's one family. Let me put it this way. We come from Adam and Eve. The Islamic Center is not only a place of religious, it's, it's, it's a kind of a social cultural activities are taking place as well. That's the reason we have a daycare and community center. Although spiritually you get uplifted here, but social and cultural activities are done in daycare and community centers. We have liaison with local authorities on various issues, education, health. We, we are liaison with local police and other bodies, Redwood Racial Quality Council. So there's a lot of other activities at background uh, which are um, continuously taking place. Uh, we have political awareness that how people should participate in the system where you live in so that we are a part of society, the awareness to joining any political party. But to be a member of the other parties is essential that you are a part of the society. You are actively participate. Wedding ceremony, marriage ceremony, uh, ladies functions. And I think had not been a center, we wouldn't be able to get a, have a kind of interaction with other communities, other faiths. We were the very first one to, to hold the meeting of the three faith forum, Abrahamic faith, Judaism, Christianity, and Muslims. So we do meet bi-monthly. Being uh, a, the largest Islamic center in Redbridge, we have a key responsibility. We are the, probably the dominant religion here, but there are other faiths here as well who play a prominent role. It's our duty as Muslims uh, not just to showcase our faith, but also to show uh, how open we are and how tolerant we are of other societies, especially with the, uh, with the Interfaith Forum, which uh, covers all the major faiths. Uh, there's a lot of work with them, a lot of activities at a youth level, at an adult level, uh, a lot of programs where we visit their places of worship, they come here, and, and that's created uh, a really helpful and useful uh, understanding between communities. To have a kind of understanding within the community through dialogue is essential. And we are part of part of society. Uh, we, we are not outside the society. We would like our young people to contribute as the very first generation contributor very positively. We are surrounded by various other places of worship. We have a Hindu temple, two Hindu temples, two churches, Jehovah Witnesses, Methodist Church, Ilford Islamic Center. We're living together for past over 30 years coexisting over 30 years, we never had a problem. We visit each other place of worship, we get to know each other. Ultimately, our aim is maybe on a roundabout to our lords, and that's our all aim. And I think the faith community, if you look into it, what faith teaches you? Faith teaches you respect for others, respect for humanity, care about your next door neighbor, care about environment, and care about this planet you're living into. And that's what every faith teaches us. We in the UK are prime example to the rest of the community, rest of the world, that how coexistence is, how culture develops and take from each other cultures. Uh, community cohesion, what's a community? What's a cohesion? Diversity, this kind of issue, when you come to Britain and when, when you visit Ilford Islamic Center, you probably find we have almost 60 different nationality and ethnic group when we're standing together, bound together. <laughs> are equal part of our society. There are 51% of our population. Similarly, in Muslim community, there are almost 52% of our population. The management here in the mosque is very helpful. You come to the mosque and they are available all the times, helping you, the teachers here, the other pe people of the management. And I've seen that um, the mosque, it, it's bigger now. So you have more space for the women, more space for the men. So they are getting bigger and bigger, which is actually helping. We found it very 
very soothing to be able to, uh, for the mosque to accommodate us, the ladies. And the mosque usually um, have um, functions, parties for Muslim ladies from different communities every month. So we, will ha we all have a chance to come here and talk. 12 years old, I live in Ilford and I attend Ilford Islamic Centre. I'm 13 years old um, and I live in Ilford Lay. I'm 12 years old and I live in London here. I go to school and I also go to the Ilford Islamic Centre. I live in Ilford and I'm 11 years old. In the masjid, when you learn, it's like one big, fam like one big happy family as well because everyone's so friendly. And in the masjid, you learn about your religion, whereas in school, um, you learn about other subjects and stuff. Both important, I imagine. Yeah, both are really important. They really um, embrace like a community. Like you don't feel really awkward. Like you have lots of friends, and the teachers are really easy to talk to. You get more knowledge from the teachers, and you learn more. Um, like you, we do hifs and more, like the teaching of Islam. Not only teaches about Islam, but they teach how to behave as well and how, the, how our ancestors behaved and how to behave around people that are not Muslim. Muslim treat everyone equally. This masjid, alhamdulillah, is so, it gives you that warm, friendly feeling and all the teachers, they really connect with you as students and they increase your knowledge about Islam so much. I've learned so much things and I've also taught my mum, she forgot some of the things since she came, but then now she's sort of learning as well and they teach you lots of things about Islam which are very important for your life. In school, uh, school before I come to mosque, all we, we learn different subjects, different stuff. Like, and when we do Ari, we learn about different faiths and everything. But here, you ha you have the time to focus on your faith and learn more about your faith. We can learn about the seerah of our prophet and just about the Quran, about what the ayahs mean, and we, then we can just build our character. I come here to understand and gain knowledge about my faith and it helps me be a stronger person. Like it helps me in school as well because it helps with my concentration as well. I was born in Albert Road, Albert Road number 52 and I'm, I'm proud to pray here. It helps me because there are a lot of, there are a lot of people that help me here and my dad, my dad helps me as well. It just makes me feel like I'm becoming a better person, going on the right path and learning about my faith. Sometimes uh, we go to the community centre, like across the road, and we have some like g uh, gatherings over there, and then we can have um, like just a um, recitation of the Quran, um, the songs of our Prophet and stuff like that. The Ilford Lion and the Ilford Islamic Centre relationships are very cordial and very nice because most of the business community who are in Ilford Lane were very first generation who are our member and were very contributor to Ilford Islamic Centre as well. So uh, the, 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 a, a lot of contribution in terms of business as well as to, uh, to a contribution to what Ilford Islamic Centre comes from Ilford Lane and various other places. And you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. We're linked with the Walden University in Norway as well as the Plymouth University. The undergraduate come every year to the Ilford Islamic Centre to get to know about how the community coexists and the variety we have here in the Bar of Redbridge. And the first trip they go to Ilford Lane, Plymouth, coming to Ilford and seeing something amazingly different than Plymouth. The different faces, the different communities, the different dresses, the different food and the different smell of variety of things is amazing. It takes them back that they just live about 130 miles away, but this is a completely different world. If you look at Ilford Lane, it's vibrant. The community is there, the life is there. So it is due to this migrant community and vast majority of Muslim community made this Ilford Lane such a vibrant place within the borough of Redbridge. We have a quiet five to six acre lane, uh, not far away from here, almost four, four to five, six miles away. We are expecting that, inshallah, hopefully, with the help of the community, the project is not less than 10, 10 million pounds, it's a huge money. But with the help of the community, we will be able to achieve, hopefully, we will be able to uh, manage those uh, issues, uh, which, which will be uh, perhaps uh, um, time-taking, but we'll be able to manage it. With the new generation, upcoming generation, and young people are masters in experience, well worse compared with the very first generation like ourselves. <laughs> Thank
दीवानी सारे नबी तेरे दर के सवाली शाही मदीना शाही मदीना शाही